Oh, we got birds. We got birds coming in. Strike the birds. Welcome, my friends. Welcome, mateys. Is it serious? Are you serious? We're back again? This is still happening? We haven't been caught by the Spanish Armada yet? No. No, my friends. We're still out there. Bigger, better, and prouder than ever. Welcome, my friends, to the Gaming Galleon. I'm Captain Raz. Just another pirate. You know, just another pirate. There's plenty of pirates out there. They're all over the place. Have you seen the internet? Oh, they're getting away with murder out there. I'm nobody special. The only difference is, is I'm only out there for your smiles and maybe a laugh or two. That's all I want. That's all I want to steal from you in the dead of night. From you and maybe your sleeping children. Okay, speaking of sleeping, speaking of children, let me tell you, children are on the brain this week. It's our first annual and hopefully last Gaming Gellion Family Night. Yeah, we've actually got uh, the whole crew uh, brought their kids onto the ship. It's kind of like, you know, daddy-daughter date night, only, you know, with pirates. Uh, it's, it's maddening out on the deck. It's pretty much everywhere. I have the hold closed off. Locked. Uh, the gargoyle sentries are on full alert to make sure no one gets in and out of there. While all these, you know, kids and grandparents and, you know, creepy uncles are uh, gallivanting around the ship. They're nice enough. But man, now that I'm here in the captain's quarters, I don't have to play captain anymore. It's just me and you. Nobody watches this crap who's on the, sh the, the ship. So I can be honest. Man, uh, are these, are pirates rabbits or something? Scabs has like... Scabs has like eight kids. And the, the ironic thing is, all eight of them have the clearest skin I've ever seen. Then I'm walking around the deck later, and I run into like just this barrel chested, like six, six foot guy with like, you know, twice as much hair as I have on my face. And I'm like, oh, how you doing? I'm, ca I'm the captain. What are you, you new to the crew? And he's like, and that's when uh, three arm t or uh, one arm Timmy showed up, and said that's his kid. Uh, <laughs> some serious hormones in milk these days, man. So I don't know. I've tried. I've been trying to be like you know the good captain, but I've also been trying my best to like keep my distance. It's just, I don't know what it is. Kids. They're just. Uh, uh, on one hand, I couldn't have less to do with them. On the other hand, I am just one big kid. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just jealous. They get to be kids. I have to. I have to work for it each and every day. And it's not that I hate kids. In fact, uh, I, it's just I, for the most part, you know, I don't know. I feel like maybe kids don't get my jokes. Kids don't care about the stuff we do here. I mean, come on. These these old video games. You think anybody care? Any kid cares about Sentinel for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? You know, so it's like I'm speaking another language to them, and it's funny. It's it's like uh, the only kids that I can stand are, are 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 my niece and my nephew. Why is that? My niece, I could just just you know watch her, you know play and discover what it is to be you know a human, a, a kid, a baby. Uh, you know, just, just sit there and just get lost, you know, or play, play, you know, Captain Commando with my nephew, you know, we, we fight and argue and, you know, I get him presents. It's like, I don't, I don't understand where that came from. Cause I was never really like that until, you know, I guess I had some, some kids with some, some direct blood, immediate blood, immediate family blood. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, this all stems from them, uh, this week's voyage. We're in Lombard, Illinois. <laughs> Just like, what? Where is that? It's somewhere in Chicagoland. I think it's on the north side. And, uh, but we're specifically at the Enchanted... We've come all the way from Indianapolis to Lombard, which, you know, isn't that long of a trip. A few hours. 
to, to set down at the Enchanted Castle. It's not just an Enchanted Castle, though. It's the Enchanted Castle Restaurant and Entertainment Complex. It's descriptive, but it's also a little clinical, wouldn't you say? It's basically one of these modern-day arcades. Now, I'm a little spoiled living in Indianapolis. There's a couple of great arcades in Indy. There's one that you can go to all day for 10 bucks and play games like Turtles in Time and King of the Fighters, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Golden Axe, Altered Beast, you know, need I go on. All the great games from the 90s. 10 bucks all day. Then you got another one where these these the, the machines at this place are pristine. It's like a barcade. This is a high-end joint. This is serious business. All their machines are in perfect condition. They've got some really obscure stuff. Uh, one was like, a, they, they have a, a horizontal shooter that was made, I believe, in Chicago. But it's one of the, like, the, and, and there's a, that place is free admission. You go there, play as many games as you want. They have rare stuff like Mar Michael Jackson's Moonwalker for the arcade. You play that all day. All you got to do is pay for beer. That's it. They've got, you know, some IPA taps. Buy yourself a beer, maybe a cider. You know, play some Street Fighter. So, I guess I'm a little spoiled, and I kind of forgot that most other towns don't have that. The modern arcade these days is very different from the arcade I grew up with. The arcade I grew up with, there were nothing but actual video games. Uh, Showbiz Pizza is a prime example. You had just lines, rows and rows of actual video games, Dig Dug and Centipede and, uh, you know, what have you. Actual video games. And then you had the Ticket Redemption area, which was one game. In my day, there was only one game way to get tickets. You guys remember this? The only game in town, the only way to get tickets was Ski Ball. Hey! We get quiet down! do a show here sorry i'm telling you it's 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 maddening out there they're everywhere i mean at least the teenagers are stuck in their phones yeah they're on a pirate ship and they're they, they, they flew through the air in a pirate ship they've been stuck on their phones whatever anyway getting back to the old arcades there was only one way to do tickets back then it was ski ball and ski ball you know uh, there was luck, but there was also skill involved, too. You could really earn tickets. You could really earn, like, if you devoted yourself to, to ski ball, you could be the guy who walked away with the tickets. Well, that's not in there anymore. These modern arcades, they're basically casinos. Straight up. You get a card that you put money onto. You know, you walk up to a, uh, and then every machine has a way to swipe money off of your off of your card and every single game i'm not kidding every single game was ticket redemption everything from claws to uh wheels that just spin to ski ball to uh they even adapted some old arcade games to ticket redemption like there was a, a space invaders extreme or something the the, the screen was like 10 feet tall, pixelated, but it was like totally over the top Space Invaders. There wasn't really any skill to it. It was just, you had a rapid fire cannon, would just blow things away, and the more score you got, the more tickets you got. But really, that was that's the end game with these new um, arcades. It's not about, you know, winning the respect you could get off of beating somebody in Street Fighter. It's not about the excitement of uh, trying to uh, get that, that high score in the arcade on the machine. It's really about, you know, capitalism. It really is. I mean, I guess arcades always have been, but I feel like there was a trade-in. You were trading your money for fun. These games, I don't really call them fun. Here, here's my experience at the, the arcade last weekend. Because we went last weekend, me and my, my family. Uh... For the kids, I was too cheap to even spend five dollars at this place. So I'm looking around and I see on the wall uh, an advertisement. It says, "You want to you want to play free? 
text this number, text Enchanted to this number, and uh, then show the text to the Redemption counter, and they'll give you a, a card with $2 worth of credit on it. So I wasn't even willing to spend $2 at this place. But what did I do? I think I used the first one for just a game where th there's like a wall of tickets. There were like six six numbers on a wheel. And if you managed to, to just n hit one of the, the numbers, you'd get like a whole mass of tickets. And I, I missed by like, you know, a millimeter, of course. And then you had, what was the other one? The other one was a pirate wheel. And I'm like, oh, I got it. No problem. I'm going to walk away, you know, with something. All over the wheel, there's like these, in big, bold numbers, there's like 200 tickets, 50 tickets, 30 tickets, 20 tickets. I'm like, you know, whatever. At least I can get a toy for my nephew or something. I spin the wheel. It's going, it's going. It's ticking toward 50, ticking toward 50. And then right before it hits the 50 mark, it stops. And what does it stop on? A, a location on the wheel about this big. And if you you squinted your eyes, you could see it said four tickets. <laughs> what a racket! What a racket! Well, we're gonna be celebrating those games today. We're gonna be visiting a modern arcade with uh, the Wii. Check it out. Arcade Zone. We actually picked this up quite recently, but it's a game that I've always wanted to grab. And after going to the Enchanted Castle Restaurant and Entertainment Complex, I could not think of a better time to go. So here on Family Night on the Galleon, we're going to be exploring a modern arcade and seeing what games are awaiting us. Okay? we got to get our Wiimote. Remember these, right? These, these are still going. It's just the Wiimote. No nunchuck for this game. Could be as bare bones as they could go. But, it's pretty exciting. Because, you know, modern or not, the whole game takes place in an arcade. That's pretty cool. How many games do that, right? So let's play some arcade zone. We'll do a little exploring. We'll tool around, see if we can get into some trouble in the arcade. We got the booty segment here. Picked this up just this weekend. Did a little work. This is the kind of lot we like to see. And uh, we'll play a little more. And of course we got our... Uh, all the way back there in the corner there. We got the bag that tells no tales. Where you get to put a question in. And put me on the spot and say, Hey Captain Raz. I've always wondered. Dot, dot, dot. Okay? So we'll do that. Uh, let's get started. Give me the Harper transition here. Family night here at the Enchanted Castle restaurant and entertainment complex. Hold your siblings. No. Hold your young younglings. What are they called? Children? <laughs> Hold your children tight. All right. Let's get started. Jesus. It's an embarrassment. All right, here we go. Got a little setting. Uh, hey, what part of this table? Hold on, I got. Let me fix this. Is, there we go. Hey, welcome to the arcade zone with all the classic games. My friends call me Todd, so of course you should call me Todd. I've ruled the games here over summer. Are you done, Todd? Working. So I was a little torn about whether or not to turn Todd off. Todd's the guy who runs the arcade. What's happening here? And uh, he runs this part of the arcade, which is the classic arcade. Now, I've actually been through here a little bit. The whole point of this game is basically to eliminate, to, to win against the, the vendors in the three first, first floor arenas and things like, uh, you know, you got Ski Ball here, Freeway, which is an old Atari game. You know, jump shot, all these, you know, ticket redemption, typical modern arcade stuff. If you manage to beat all three of the vendors in all three of the different arcades, you can go upstairs to the arcade master zone. Now, originally, my plan was for us to try and get up there, but that's when I realized that 
the different themed arcades here. Now, right now, we're in the classic arcade zone. Over here, you see a sign that says the sci-fi zone. But over here, what do we have? That's right, my friends. It's a pirate arcade. Now, I haven't been in here yet, so I don't know what to expect. But let's experience it together, shall we? Well, howdy. I suppose this is a pirate zone. I'm Gina. You'll see my name a lot here. I have all the high scores on all them games. You can challenge me if you want. Don't blame the pirate queen if you can't right. my Right, okay. Scores. Fix my microphone here real quick. It's a little high. There we go. That's better. Okay, Gina. Do I get your number if I win? So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Yo ho ho! A pirate arcade. What do we got? We got a big mizzenmast up here. There's a giant treasure chest that's locked. Now, basically, why this is? Oh, that's the pri that's redemption. Okay. That's the way upstairs. Well, let's just pick one of these, shall we? Deck Swab Hockey. Uh, I'm the blue one. I'm blue. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is pretty bad. There we go. This is the... Uh, uh. Oh, dude, I'm killing it. This is really the... All I'm doing is moving the stupid Wiimote left and right. That's it. Now, obviously, you can tell this is a four-player game. If you have four friends who are willing to play with you. I don't have any friends. I have pirates, and they're all busy with their children and wives and, and you know, step stepchildren and whatnot. So, it's just us. Uh, and let me tell you, I'm <laughs> not putting out much of a challenge. This red guy might beat me only because the other guys are incompetent. Oh! Oh, in your face, red guy! Alright, there we go. Oh, did I take the high score? Now the mic is too low. Am I, uh, I'm like... Can I just accept where the mic's gonna be and just go with it? Alright, there we go. Okay, so that was easy. No, we'll play it. We'll exit. Uh, there's like three other games here in the, the Pirate Arcade. If we manage to beat them all, we'll be able to take on Gina to get the Pirate Zone trophy. Howdy, I suppose. Pirate Booty Spin. Gina, you got to stop, sweetheart. Stop the spinner on the map to collect 250. Whoa. I'd draw you a map. I reckon it wouldn't help much. Oh, so close. Got it. I thought that was... Oh, I got to go for the map. There we go. There's the map. Give me that treasure. Ugh. Maybe you got a touch of the seven seas in you after all. But it's some rough waters ahead if you want to beat my high score on this here game. Oh, Gina, I'm killing you. I don't know what her high score is, but I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to go to the third island. Ugh. How'd I do, Gina? A thousand? What was her high score? Now I gotta go see. Well, howdy. I suppose. Uh, Gina, what, what's your high score? Fifteen? Gina, I'm gonna kill that. All right, here we go. I'd draw you a map. I reckon it wouldn't help much. Ugh. I usually don't encourage would be buccaneers. Ugh. But I feel the I want to get to that third island. Oh, I suck. I want to go again. I'm not done with that. I draw you a map. I reckon it wouldn't help much. Oh. Ugh. 
All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're just going to go for the high score. I think we're going to be in another island if we're going to do that. How many turns do I get? Five. Five turns. <laughs> she says I have patches on both eyes. Gina, you're a jerk. One more. Oh, that was beautiful. Come on now. Oh, I'm supposed to go for the map here too, aren't I? Dang. Maybe X I got it! I almost got her. So maybe you could I got you, baby. Oh, Gina. Oh, nice knowing you, sweetheart. I usually don't encourage would be buccaneers. Oh! Gina, I'm farther than you've ever been. Ugh. It's way off there. Can someone explain to me why Gina sounds like she's from Mississippi? All right. I think we're going to leave it there. Leave it there? Okay, Gina. Yeah, I, I can hear your voice a lot, too. Jeez, a peeped. Gina, you little tart. Okay, so that's Arcade Zone. Uh, this is the game. This is the kind of game you're gonna get for you know five bucks. It's really meant to be played with others. Uh, but I don't know the I, the idea. I love the single player campaign to this. It's all the games you don't want to play. It's all that ticket redemption stuff, but you don't have to pay for it. So I guess in that regard, it's fun. Uh, there is a prize counter too, um, where you can uh, spend all the tickets that you earn. On stuff, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of prizes you can get, but um, maybe we'll check that out if we get time. All right, let's hit the old booty segment here. So, as I said, I went to visit the family, we went to the Enchanted Castle that inspired me to bring the whole pirate crew here today so they could get their family out there and uh, have them uh, deal with the headaches of. Uh, trying to figure out what your kid wants with 50 tickets. I was out there to visit. There's a Salvation Army just down the road from where my parents live and my sister. It was a Saturday morning. I'd been at my sister's place since about, you know, 9 a.m. You know, kids, they get up early, so we were playing in the living room. Around 10.45 rolled around, and that's when I said, hey... I'll be back in about 20 minutes. She's like, where are you going? And I'm like, going to go hit up that old Salvation Army. Why is this such a... Why, why is this place getting me to go so early in the morning? I don't like to go anywhere unless it's like... I, I, I usually, when I'm hunting for games, I will stop after work. Somewhere on the way home. This is in the middle of my weekend. I'm usually not in going for hunting, but this place has basically driven me to have to go there very often, mainly because it's so close to the house. And they flat rate every single video game they have at 50 cents a pop. I found Xbox One games in there for 50 cents a pop. I found 3DS in games in there for 50 cents a pop. I don't think I've found any cartridges yet. But it's important to realize that they don't care about video games at all. They're just moving inventory. So it's important to us to try and grab that inventory before anyone else does. This is a small Midwestern town. There's not a lot of sharks. There probably, I'm sure there are some. 
but you know we have the advantage of location we have the advantage of being an early bird so why not take the chance so I took the chance they had like five DVDs in the DVD section and one game which was like uh, I believe are you smarter than a fifth grader for the PlayStation 2 I was about to leave and that's when I saw a clerk come around the corner with this she puts it on the counter she sits, she comes by me in the DVD section she sets it down she pulls out a handful with a puzzled look on her face and it's PS2 games. And I'm like, can I see that box? I look in, and the thing is stacked. Stacked! Let's get started. PlayStation 2 games. 50 cents each. I Actually, I think there's a few platforms in here. The majority is PS2. Let's get started. There's too much to go through. What do you got? Cars. Mater National. We played Cars on the Galleon before. Not this one, though. I think this one is, is a more, little bit more... Oh, there's Monster Truck Mode. Oh, this is neat. How about that? You see that? Featuring uh, Sully and uh, Mike from Monsters, Inc. in car form. Huh. It's kind of neat. I, this looks like it's just a basic... Uh, looks like, okay, we got some mini games in here. You know, tracks, racing. It's a racing game. Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Believe it or not, this game used to be online. Two-player co-op. Can you believe that? I remember picking it up uh, when it was used. And uh, finding out that the one week that I picked it up was the week the servers were going down. So I've never tried it online, but I have played with my sister quite a bit. Uh, this one, we played it quite a bit. It's action-y. It's hack and slash. It's probably the best of these hack and slash games that came out. Highly recommend it. It's on uh, Xbox and GameCube also. Black! You kidding me? Oh, boy. You like shooters? This is high pedigree. High pedigree shooting, my friend. This is like, you know... The glass breaks, shatters in a million pieces if you shoot it. Uh, barrels will come down on enemies if you shoot them from above. Uh, it's I believe they build this as gun porn when it was coming out. Gun porn. I'm not kidding. All guns blazing. And it's one player. They were gutsy to do that. No game was doing one player shooters at that time. They were all split screen multiplayer. Or at least had to have that. This game was like, nope. We're just going to make something memorable. And they sure did. Spider-Man Friend or Foe. I believe this is an action RPG. Kind of like a, a Champions of Noria. Yeah, team up with a buddy for co-op gameplay. Looks like you have uh, quite a few. I believe you can play all these different characters here. You got Iron Fist there. You got Venom. Black Hat. Even, even like... A, Green, Go Green Goblin and stuff. I believe you can unlock them to play as them. So that's pretty cool. Never played it. I'd like to sit down with somebody and play that sometime. Hot, Hot Shots 3 Golf. We've been getting a lot of these lately. Hot Shots Golf 3. 50 cents. Couldn't say no. Dragon Ball Z Sagas. Uh, from what I understand, another action RPG. Two player action RPG. Uh, yeah. Play as your favorites, Goku, Gohan, Vegeta. I believe it's playing through the show. You know, which is like basically every every Dragon Ball game follows the show. Kingdom Hearts, here's your JRPG selection. K Kingdom Hearts, uh, Chain of Memories. It's a striking case. I remember being on the lookout for this one for some time. And now they seem to be everywhere. I think everybody's dumping their old PS2 versions. Ever, all these games are in real nice shape. Of course, I, then I throw them in a box across the room. SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. Something's jiggling around in here. Well, I'll be damned. 
You got two copies of it. For whatever reason. Alright. I will admit that I've noticed that some of these are pretty beat up. This one, this one's massively bad. That's probably why they have two copies of it. So some of the, uh, some of these games in here I'll be looking to resurface, but some of them are in good shape. Most of this we have. Uh, we're probably going to trade them in for uh, some a boatload of credit. We got Pac-Man 2, World 2 here, which is a very uh, cool, oh look at that. Look at that, he's, he's swimming. You know, very quality 3D platformer. Uh, the best part about these Pac-Man World games is you'll always eventually find an arcade where you can play the original Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man Jr. Uh, it's not saying what games you can play in here, but I know that that's always kind of a a thing that they add in to these. So, uh, very good pickup for 50 cents. A lot of fun here. 50 cents. We found DBZ Budokai 3. This is one of the holy grails of the system. Especially if you're a fighting game fan. Still in high demand. I think it may be in higher demand now than ever, thanks to Dragon Ball Fighter. I remember this game going down in price a little bit. Uh, it used to be somewhere around seventy dollars. I remember selling a couple for seventy, sixty dollars a couple years back. Then I thought it kind of fell off a little bit, but then I looked this one up. Amazon has this for ninety dollars. The cheapest one available used on Amazon is ninety dollars. Can you believe that? We got it for 50 cents. Uh, I hope it works. Haven't tested it, and I gotta be frank, the disc looks like uh, it Yeah, it really needs help. I hope it works. Can't say, I, sh I should have checked. Sorry. Fingers crossed on that one. ATV Off-Road Fury 2. They used to, didn't they pack these in with the PlayStation 2 at some point? Those are everywhere, but they're fun games. DJ, I don't even know how this made it in here. That was a mistake, DJ Hero. Get it out of here. We don't need that in our lives. I, I mean, we just don't. Uh, Road Rage. Simpsons Road Rage. This is heavy. It's got the manual in here. Looks like that one's in real nice shape. What's this? Hits 2003. This is like the NBA Jam of hockey games, so... This is probably a pretty good time. He's intense. That's some serious business right there. All right. Pick up a handful of these. Ben 10, Protector Earth. You ever watch Ben 10? It's a great show. I don't know how the game is. But if you can just, if you can randomly change into all these aliens and, and fight guys, this is probably pretty good. Uh... No case, we have Dragon Quest VIII. What a great game. This just recently got re-released on 3DS. Uh, if you're looking for a nice, uh, you know, well-made, turn-based RPG with a great, fun, whimsical story, pick this up for your 3DS. Very good stuff. Uh, the one PlayStation 1 game they had, Snowcross. Championship Racing. Oh, this is funny. You got you got snow cross in here, but then you also have snowboarding. If snowboarding, if snow cross is enough, you've got snowboarding. Yes, that's a real title, and it's brought to us by Trevor. Thank you, Trevor. All right. Soul Caliber three. Soul Caliber three. Uh, I believe that's, uh, oh, I don't know who that is. I was going to say that was, uh, that's Assassin's Creed guy, but maybe not. No, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know if there's any guest stars in this one. Very nice shape though. Okay. Still going, man. Underground 2. Need for Speed Underground 2. Tekken 5, always like to pick this one up. Uh, I'm not a real Tekken 5 fan, but this game includes Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, 
and a, a PlayStation 1 long box game called Starblade, which is some sort of shooter. I'm not exactly sure uh, why this is why Starblade's included, if it has something to do with the story of Tekken. I'm not really sure. But that's basically five games on the, that disc. SSX, the original. Not sure we have that. That was like a launch game, wasn't it? Yeah. Blue disc. Very early title. Okay. Medal of Honor Vanguard. I've actually kind of wanted to play this lately. I hear it's open world. Immerse yourself in the most realistic Medal of Honor battles ever. Well, maybe at the time. <laughs> but I think this is open world. Uh, or like parts of it are. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Gran Turismo 3. A spec. Look at that nice, look at that disc. I glossed out Gran Turismo there. That's pretty cool. Alright. Call of Duty 2. Big Red 1. Special Edition. I don't know what's so special about it. What's so special about you? Special Edition included says some more skins for multiplayer. I'm pretty sure this, this game is dead. Yeah, one player only. Uh, cast interviews with celebrity in-game actors. I wonder who was in it. Spy Hunter. Rumble Racing. I hear a lot of people like this one. In the retro world, I don't, I haven't ever played it. All right, coming to the end here. 007 Quantum Silas. Can you believe somebody just dropped all these off? It, it, I mean, literally, they didn't even make them out of the box by the time I got them. It could not have been more serendipitous. Batman the video game, Lego Batman. Destroy. In a destroyed all case, totally wrecked, we have a copy of Destroy All Humans 2. Uh, open world, uh, look at the spindles stuck in there. <laughs> I'll pop that out. There you go. There you go. Uh, that's a co-op uh, open world adventure where you're just blowing away uh, humans. How about that, huh? Metal Gear Solid 2. How are we doing out of time? Good. We're in good shape. Uh, here's one I'm excited to, to grab. We didn't have this in the hold, which is a rarity with PS2 games these days. Uh, Micro Machines. This was a real NES classic back in the day. I wonder how this is. It's in pristine condition. Very nice. Let's see how the disc is. It's like it's almost like the, the, they had taken all the cases, put them on the shelf, and then just laid all the discs on the floor. Yeah, this one's got a bunch of fingerprints on it, but it's not scratched. Okay. Monster Jam. Maximum Destruction. You got Gravedigger there. Okay. World Championship cards. I basically, like I said, I took the, I took the whole box. Took the whole day. You know, I wasn't I wasn't worried about what we what was there, what wasn't. And then there were even a few Wii games in there. First one I saw was Smash Brothers Brawl for 50 cents. Can't front on that. This is the one that has Solid Snake in it. Isn't this the one that also has all the sample games too? You can unlock like minute long uh, versions of the original games. Like Mario, There's you can play Super Mario for a minute or Star Fox for a minute. That's pretty cool. Pretty sure this is the one that does it. Smarter than a fifth grader. Why did I pick this? Uh, it's sealed. That's really the only reason. Sealed copy of this. Who knows? Funny, funny story about this was I bought. I had the whole box. Said I'm going to take it all. Hold it for me. I'm going to look around the store. I went to the back of the store, and in the electronics section, sitting on the shelf by itself, sealed, 
was this, and they had a price on it for four fifty. I'm not going to pay that, but I put it in the box. You know, another fifty cents. Uh, and then um, finally for fifty cents, Polka Park Wii. Pikachu's Adventure. I don't know much about this series. I think it basically started on the Wii. Experience the action-packed attractions at the Poke Park. Oh, so there you go. It's, uh, I guess, some sort of uh, theme park kind of game. Maybe a bunch of mini-games. One-player experience. Hmm. Okay. And then uh, they had a few Lucy's. They had a few Lucy's. I left a couple of these Lucy's behind. Uh, Frogger 2 comes to mind. We have that for Dreamcast. And uh, Modern Combat. What's that game? Battlefield Modern Combat 2 was disc only. Uh, I don't even think you can play that offline. So we didn't, we didn't grab those. What we did grab, though, was Guilty Gear. Pretty sweet fighting game. And the PS2 Network Adapter Startup Disc. You needed this back when we wanted to play Final Fantasy XI. I guess there were a whole bunch of online games, so you needed this. But, opening it up, what do we see? Well, there's a disc here. It's behind the manual. And that's our startup disc. Not for sale. Well, if my network disc is there, what's this other disc? Y'all ready for this? 50 cents. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This is not an easy game to find. And it's even harder to find now that uh, because of licensing reasons, this game has been pulled from all digital services. There was a while there you could get this on PlayStation 3. That has since stopped. So the only way to get this game at home now is on PlayStation 2, Dreamcast, and Xbox. And the ravenous demand that comes with this game. Oh, Lord. Uh, it's the old blue disc, so this one's been around for a while. Basically, on a good day, you're going to get $50 for this game. Yeah, on a crazy day, you're going to get what Amazon's asking, which is 70 The cheapest copy of this game on Amazon right now, $70. Now, we have a complete copy, or at least one in a case. So I don't know what we're going to do with this one. But, uh, wow. What a deal. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and for whatever reason, this was in the box. I couldn't say no. Books, paperbacks, Salvation Army are a quarter each. We picked up the Lord of the Rings. Uh, three, three volume set for uh, 75 cents. You know, a quarter of a book. So I thought that was worth picking up. All right, so that's it. Oh my God. Uh, I don't even want to count. At the end of the day, we spent, so, we spent about $21. On that. That's pretty hot. That's a great selection of games in really nice condition. Uh, we're going to keep some of the, the lesser known games that we just don't have, like Mi Micro Machines, Rumble Racing. Um, but I don't like the rest we're going to sell. I don't know what we're going to do with uh, Dragon Ball Budokai 3 and Marvel vs. Capcom 2. We'll have to test them first, obviously, make sure they're in working order, get them resurfaced. And then, I don't know, we might sell them and, you know, make, make about $120 on them. That'd be pretty hot, huh? So there you go. Pretty nice deal. We had other stuff going on, but the fact that this happened on the very weekend that we're celebrating the Enchanted Castle Restaurant and Entertainment Complex, uh, the same weekend that I just happened to go all the way to Illinois, had not been there in months, walk in to this place and walk right out with a box of games for nothing. Practically nothing. Thought we really had to push that one ahead. So there you go. All right. Let's get back to the arcade zone. Let's go uh, see if we can uh, 
take Gina's crown from her, huh? All right, where's my my harp? Harp back at you, baby. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got booty pirate spin. We already played that one. We've got we've got a gold ribbon, gold medal here on deck swab. What's this down here? Oh, that's that's off to the classic zone. Ship toss. All right, she's got a six hundred on ship toss. Oh, this looks fun. I don't know what this is, but it looks fun. Y'all aim the cannonballs right. You can think. Point the remote. Fire. Oh yeah, I could do this all day. Come on, send a couple pirates to see Davy Jones. I gotta lead it. Alright, I'm working on it. So now this is this is legitimately fun because I didn't have to spend a buck fifty to play it. Oh my god, it's a Lactus monster! That was awesome. That was a ghost ship. Gina, your score is going way down. She said 50 miles to the galleon. I'm going to have to use that one. Oh, I missed, the, I missed him. But I got enough. She, She's like at 630 or something. Yeah, eat my barnacles, Gina. I got a high rate you as a real hot buckler. High score and all that. Looks like you made my old high score. That's right. I suppose. Oh, of course. I'm Gina. Now the cool thing about this game. Gina? Challenge me if you want. Don't blame the pirate queen if you can't. Okay, enough. Uh some of these games there are actually unlike the Enchanted Castle Restaurant and Entertainment Complex, there are some actual video games in these arcades. And here's one. An old classic by, uh, I don't think this is Act was this Activision? I thought a Magic made this, but here we go. Atlantis. Basically, the aliens are coming to kill Atlantis, and you as the gunner are here to stop them. Yeah, this is I'm I'm using I'm using the Wii mode for this. This is not how they played it in the Atari days. That's okay. Gina, you don't know what you're talking about. You invite those people in for coffee. Oh. Gina, what's your score? Because I think I got you. Although they have... Oh. They have managed to take out... Oof. Oh, no. What's your high score? We're going to go again. We're going to play this serious because we don't have a lot of time. And I want to beat Gina at her own game. Oh. Atlantis might be in danger, but I, don't reckon my high I like that she's talking about Atlantis, like the video, the video game. I like that. Oh, I got killed. Am I not... So I, I didn't get I didn't pass that. What's your score, Gina? Guys, we got to try and get that pipe. We only have ten minutes left. Uh, in the voyage, but we do we totally need to. Well, okay, howdy. so. Two sixty. We need at least two sixty to pass that. Okay, no problem. Yeah, because we want to go over here. You see the hook, on the right. That's the pirate trophy. We want that bad. Yeah, all right. Here we go, Gina. Skulls and crossbones are how you can tell who's a pirate. These ships of 
skulls and crossbones, don't you reckon you should shoot? Fifty. Yo ho ho! You can't One thirty. this game. You still gotta work to claim my title of best Atlantean. <laughs> Beater. Guess I was batting down my hatches. Looks like you could take my high score. Two fifty, that's it. Oh my god. No. All right. You know a bit about playing games or playing pirates or maybe both. Well, I got a trophy that's your plunder for the taking. If you show me your skills at my smoothie. You guys ready for this? It's time to take Junior to her own game at the Smooth Moves smoothie counter. So she's got a 600. Did I Oh, I almost had her score. She had 300. All right, 600. Let's see if we can beat her. Making smoothies. Make a smoothie, mix a smoothie, serve a smoothie. Sounds easy, huh? Until you have to do it fast and for tons of customers. So, let's see your moves. Okay. Now, no pressure or anything, but you're actually supposed to make your smoothie quick. Oh my god, what is happening? This is this isn't right. I think smoothies qualify as a fast food. Unless you're serving. I don't know what I'm doing. Gina help. Okay, alright, I get it. There's other teammates. Okay, I got it now. I got it. I got it. Give me some ice. Give me some strawberry. Give me some orange. Mix it up. Oh, I dropped it. No, I need... Oh, boy. All right, we're going to go again. Can we go again? <laughs> that was terrible. How is this a video game? All right, make it smoothies. Here we go. I can, I can barely make a frozen pizza. This takes some serious, uh... Well, they're less like smoothies and more like... Okay, rough. now I gotta, I gotta well, serve them too. Best. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Mom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that job at the, at the arcade. Just wait, you wait and see. I screwed that up. That was a bad order. That was on me. Cream. Grape. Wait. Hold on. No, oh my god, I suck at this. This is like a nightmare. Mix. Mix. What did I get? 400 points? Alright, thanks. We're going to leave it there. Did I get it? I think we earned it. Oh, we gotta go prizing. See, we got the we got the we got the trophy, the hook. All right, let's do a little redemption before we gotta go. We're late. We've got eight hundred to spend. 
Where's 800? Is 200 the most I can use? You gotta be kidding me. Where's 800? All right, we're going for 200 then. Oh, it's a wind-up parrot. It's what is it? Just a picture? That's all I get. This. What is this? Oh, this is the classic room. Okay, so this is the pirate room. All right. What else is here? A remote control pirate ship. That's awesome. What else? A, a cannon pencil sharpener. Oh, I'm gonna be the talk of the talk of the school. And finally, oh, a peg leg. I could have used that about a month ago. Fifty bucks. This is our last one. Oh, matching pirate earrings. Giveaway coming soon. All right, let's leave it there. Let's get out of here. I didn't want to leave it. Man, there's so much saving in this game. You done earned yourself. Oh, Gina, quiet. Gina, Gina, you're cut off, lady. Jeez, oh, Pete. We gotta get to this booty segment, and we gotta get to this uh, letter here. Don't we? That's arcade zone. Did it make you feel like you're in one of those old modern arcades? That's what they're like, except they're way more expensive. We probably played about $60 worth of games there. All right, maybe not that much. But like $20, easy. I don't know. Let's see what we got. Ready for a letter? All right, this one comes from uh, Wacuster Dust. Wacuster Dust. And he or she asks, not her, sure what a Custer does this. Uh, what are your standout titles or hidden gem shooters? Oh, uh, I like this question. I assume you're talking space shooters like Atlantis, uh, Sigma Star Saga, R Type Final for the PS2, Sigma Star Saga for the Game Boy Advance. Um, what else? What's that game called? For the PS1, not uh, not Eyehinder. Um, it's like Soul Soul Brave. It's not Soul Blade. We're gonna play that one sometime. Uh, what's the shooter Raiden? I play the most. Hidden though, Sigma Star Saga. If you haven't played that one, get Sigma Star Saga. Art Type Final, you probably heard of, but if you haven't, that's gonna give you a lot of miles on the PS2. As for the uh, ones on the PS, I mean Xbox 360 sure has some. Death Smiles, um, trying to think of what else, uh, 360 has. There's a whole bunch of shooters on the 360, uh, made by Konami and, and whatnot, so that's a good system to look for shooters. And, uh, I just picked up Raiden 5 for the PlayStation 4, not exactly a hidden gem, but no one really talks about it because no one cares about shooters. So you get that. Oh, 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 the one to get, Darius Burst. Darius Burst, it's $60 just to download it. $60 just to download it. Uh, but it's the finest shooter out there. It's four-player. Uh, and there's a whole host of, of ships that you can recruit from modern Darius ships all the way back to the first Darius ship. This is a long-running series by Tato, like decades old. And uh, they've even licensed a couple of Sega ships for downloadable content. So look for Darius Burst. On PSN, you're going to be paying out the nose for it. You can get a physical copy, but I think those are even more expensive. That's probably my most wanted game on the PS4 right now is Darius Burst. Uh, just because it's so expensive, or just because it's a great shooter. I've played it in the arcade. It's awesome. Uh, I'd love to have it for home console. Again, a four-player shooter uh, of that ilk would be right up my alley. All right. Thank you, uh, Whack and Stardust and... Whatever your name was, Lack of Stardust. Way, way to invest in the crew there, Brass. Whack your Stardust. Uh, if you got a question, whisper it, you know, whatever. You're an adult, you know what you're doing. Um, we'll put it in the mailbag for you. Thanks for joining me here this week at the Enchanted Castle Restaurant and Entertainment Complex. I am going to hide in here until it's time to go. Uh, I just. There's a lot of chaos out there, and I think I'd be better off just sitting in here playing Atlantis with Gina. Next week, we'll have another adventure for you. Not sure where, not sure when, but I know one thing. 
I, I always say not sure where I know sure when. We know when. It's 6 p.m. Eastern every Thursday. Unless that changes. But wherever we end up, I know one thing. We're going to go there together. So until then, my mateys and scallywags and outlaws alike. Farewell and adieu to ye fair Spanish maidens. Farewell and adieu, ye ladies of Spain, for we received orders for to visit the enchanted castle. And we may never leave. Wait. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. Keep your powder dry, mateys. Oh, and your ticket stubs. Keep those too.